All right, something that makes South Carolina so interesting and important is that it has traditional, traditionally chosen the actual nominee, with the exception of Mitt Romney. That's right. Bob Schieffer spoke to our digital embed, Kylie Atwood, from the Rubio Campaign Office in Columbia, South Carolina, about this and much more. Take a listen. I'm here with Bob Schieffer, and we are at the Rubio Campaign Office in Columbia, South Carolina. So, Bob, what's your impression of what's going on here? Well, you know, when you come to a place like this and see all these young people, they're all in a good humor. They're, they're operating a phone bank. I don't care which side you're on. It kind of reinforces your faith in the whole system. This is what politics is supposed to be about. And uh, I think these young people are getting a great experience here. And they're all having a good time doing it. And uh, we got to find some way to get young people back into politics because my generation and the generation that came after me has kind of uh, fouled it up and, and it needs to be straightened out. And you get to see these kids. Uh, this, this is what politics ought to be about. So we've now had the Iowa caucus and the New Hampshire primary. Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little bit of historical context for the role that South Carolina usually plays in the primary process? Well, you know, uh, Iowa and New Hampshire are where we get to see the candidates in action. Uh, it's face-to-face, one-on-one politics. South Carolina, especially for Republicans, is where the party picks its candidate. You know, every uh, Republican who has won the South Carolina primary, with the exception of Mitt Romney in 2012, has gone on to get the Republican nomination. Uh, so will South Carolina be as predictive as it has in the past? I don't know, because this year it's very, very different. I mean, what we're seeing here is not so much a campaign, it's just a demolition derby. Uh, everybody going at everybody, and uh, who knows where this thing is coming out. So another thing that South Carolina is known for is dirty politics, and you warned me of that when I got here, but it seems like we've kind of seen the candidates go after one another, but not, you know, in a, in a dirtier sense than any other point in the campaign. Why do you think that is? Well, what this, what, what is different about this campaign? We have had these, you know, undercurrents and below the table under the radar kind of uh, dirty politics and campaigns like I, I remember in 2000 when the Bush people accused uh, 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 John McCain or people who were for George Bush I guess uh, of, of fathering an illegitimate black child uh, which was totally you know totally made up out of whole cloth there was nothing to it but you saw that a lot of times in the past in South Carolina. What's different this time is the dirty politics is on top of the table. It's above the radar. I mean, these candidates have been going against each other in such a way that they don't need to do things below the belt and, and, and behind the scenes. It's all out there for everybody to see this time around, and, uh, and that's, that's where we are. All right, one more thing. You went to your first Trump rally last night. What were your impressions? Well, I've got to say, uh, whether you like him or don't like him, he knows how to make a, a speech. He knows how to make, uh, in this day and time, a way to connect with people. His supporters love him. Now, he made a speech, and uh, he didn't really, in my view, propose any solutions to any problems, but he made a list of the problems that are bothering people, and folks didn't seem to be expecting solutions from him. They were just glad to see him uh, speaking out. I've asked several people at the rally, I said, what is it you really like about Tom Donald Trump? And the answer was always uh, in one word, one way or the other, look, I like him because he speaks his mind. And I think that's why he is connecting with so many voters. How far that'll carry him? I think somewhere down the line, he's started, got to start telling us in a realistic way how he's going to solve all these problems. But so far, the people that are for him, he is really connecting he with them. He does say some out there things, though. Like yesterday, he talked about a general dipping bullets in blood and killing Muslims back in the 1900s when he was talking about terrorism. Mm -hmm. What do you think of him talking about that? Well, he didn't actually say Muslims. Uh, he was talking about General Pershing. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's, a, there's a, a legend, as it were, kind of a... A uh, thing that uh, General Pershing and some versions of this have him in the Spanish-American War in the Philippines, rounding up 50 people that uh, Trump identified as terrorists. Uh, he took uh, pig's blood and and uh, drop uh, immersed bullets in that, yeah. and then had a firing squad kill 49 of these people. And the 50th one, he said, "Okay, go back and tell your people." 
what happened here. And as his version of the story was that, uh, that the terrorism stopped for 25 years. But we didn't get very many details. And so far, uh, it's been hard to find anybody that sees any proof that this actually happened. It's, it's certainly a tale that's been around and certainly been making its way around the Internet. Uh, as yet, we've seen no evidence that it's actually true. But again, uh, at this rally, the people loved hearing him tell it. And uh, they didn't seem to want proof. They were just, uh, they were glad to see him say we need to do a beyond waterboarding. And uh, they seemed to think that was a good idea. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we will find out what happens tonight in the South Carolina primary. Um, but for now, reporting back to you, CBSN. Thanks.